Okay, this video is about the uh, operation of the synapse. Um, you actually do need to know this sequence. It's really unlikely because of the lack of sort of just factual recall content on your papers that you'd just be asked to sort of say how it works. Um, it's always a possibility but you'd be lucky to get that. The far more likely to ask you the sort of AO1, AO2 stuff about chemicals that act on synapses uh, in a lot of ways because there are lots of chemicals that can do that. However, you can't tackle an unfamiliar situation like that without actually understanding how the synapse works. So you do need to know this stuff. So let's just have a look at the, uh, the structures uh, so that we're using the right language to describe it. Um, this bit up here is coming from an axon and our axon, its job is to transmit nerve impulses. So what we're going to have coming down here, if, the, uh, if there's a stimulus, is that sort of wave of action potentials heading down. This sort of expanded thing here um, is poshly called a bouton. Let's keep it simple. I'm going to call that the synaptic knob, just for comedy purposes. <laughs> and it's really easy to remember. You'll see that I've put some channels, a little channel in the membrane here. And again, this is a voltage-gated channel, just like we came across in the nervous system, but this time it's for calcium. So this represents a voltage-gated calcium ion channel. This, um, in the middle, represents what we call a synaptic vesicle. Now these only occur in synaptic knobs, so they only occur on one side of the synapse. And these contain neurotransmitter. Can't squeeze it in. Oh, there we go. And of course, these little organelles down here, instantaneously recognisable as mitochondria. Which are a lovely source of ATP for anything that requires energy. So, what is a synapse? A synapse is somewhere where a nerve cell, the axon ending, uh, reaches another cell. Um, so that could be another neurone, or it could be a muscle, or it could be a gland. So on this side, our impulse is coming down this way. This side is therefore called a pre synaptic membrane. And the other side is a post synaptic membrane after the synapse. And the synapse, of course, describes the place where those two are joined. And in the middle, we have the synaptic cleft. So this is an uh, intercellular space, really, between the two membranes and they are very small. This is obviously a representative diagram. So the job of the synapse really is to transmit this wave of ex excitation across this gap and to another cell and that gap is far too big for um, any electrical changes in this membrane to cause electrical changes in this membrane which is what we want. So we've got depolarizations and we want to have depolarizations in this membrane as well. And so the signal now changes from being a, an electrical in, uh, impulse into a chemical stimulus 
So these neurotransmitters are going to stimulate this membrane to respond. And this is the kind of sequence of events that you need to uh, be able to parrot off <coughs> and understand. So, as our wave of depolarization comes down here and this bit of the uh, synaptic knob goes positive as the wave of depolarization hits it, that's going to open these voltage-gated calcium channels and calcium ions are going to flood into the synaptic knob. And our calcium ions are, uh, I always associate them with fusion, they do fusion in quite a lot of things and one of the things that they're going to do is they are going to act on these vesicles filled with neurotransmitter and force them to migrate to the presynaptic membrane and fuse with it and once they're fusing with it then our neurotransmitter inside is going to leak out so that process by which the neurotransmitter leaves is exocytosis The neurotransmitter will then happily diffuse uh, across the synaptic cleft, which is only a very small gap, and it links on to receptors. So these little M's represent neurotransmitter receptors. And these are only found on the postsynaptic membrane. So the great thing is that this synapse uh, arrangement keeps the, the wave of excitation moving in one direction. Uh, so it provides unidirectional. You only ever get vesicles in the synaptic knob. You only get the receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. Once the neurotransmitter is linked onto that receptor, those receptors are also um, channels. So no, no neurotransmitter on the channel, it's closed. Neurotransmitter opens the channel. What's that channel for? That channel is for our depolarizing sodium ions. So our sodium ions will then move into and cause a depolarization the postsynaptic cell. If that's another um, neuron, then obviously that wave of depolarization will carry on down through the dendron or through the cell body and into an axon and to its own synapse with something else. If it's a muscle cell, for those people doing um, musculoskeletal anatomy, it will open calcium ion channels which will trigger that start of the, um, the start of the muscle contraction. But you can't leave these trans neurotransmitters indefinitely on the receptors. So, in some way, they've got to be taken up and then they've got to be repackaged into, um, into its vesicles. So, there are a couple of scenarios. Some are directly sort of taken up in, in channels and the mitochondria provide the energy to repackage them into vesicles. But one of the things uh, that allows you to then do some interpretation of how things are affected and sort of synoptically addresses enzymes is that there are enzymes in the synaptic cleft that break down They've got an active site complementary to the shape of the neurotransmitter they break down the neurotransmitter into little bits which are then uptaken, resynthesized and packaged back into vesicles. So, 
There are two neurotransmitters that you need to know. Uh, one, and the most common one I think, is uh, acetylcholine. So this is the one found at all neuromuscular junctions and it's found everywhere in the parasympathetic nervous system for people doing um, neurobiology. So acetylcholine, the enzyme is the entertainingly named, to break it down, is called acetylcholine esterase, which kind of tells you that it's breaking down an ester bond somewhere in there. And our other one is uh, noradrenaline. Now this acts just like adrenaline, so if you think fight or flight response, it's a very sort of stimulatory kind of, um, kind of neurotransmitter. So it's found in the sympathetic nervous system. And so the terms that you'll see sort of banded around are cholinogenic synapses, meaning that the transmitter is acetylcholine um, and adrenalinic ones for the ones that use noradrenaline. Now that is not an exhaustive list of neurotransmitters and there are various other neurotransmitters in the brain. I'm sure uh, anybody who does psychology could tell you about those. Um, again, you don't need to know those, they're not on your syllabus, but if you're given information about one of these, like serotonin or dopamine, um, you might need to apply these principles to how it causes its effect on the postsynaptic membrane. So that's synapses for you.